Hello everybody, hope all has been well. It is week 14 and I'm going to be lecturing you guys on photography in the age of Snapchat. First, I want to tell you guys why I chose this topic. Well, it's simple. Snapchat is something I can relate to because I have it. In my opinion, Snapchat is a social media platform designed to communicate quickly with friends and people you know. The quick picture here, a short video there, quick communication to me is what this app is about, and of course, sharing a laugh. So, as required by this assignment, I read the article Photography in the Age of Snapchat by Daniel Miller, and the article reads some interesting points that impacted my understanding of this topic. But first, let me tell you the gist of the article. Miller writes about the evolution of social media photography over the years. He brings up Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, and elaborates where social media is heading. But there were definitely some interesting points I want to share with you all. First and foremost, let's talk about the photo. Ah, yes, the photo. The first photograph was taken in 1826 by Joseph Nesfor Nitz. It wasn't much to look at, but it was the first one nonetheless. Moving forward to more modern times, we enter the world of Facebook. Facebook, as Mel puts it, appears as a convenient bridge between more traditional photography and the more recent social media. This is sort of like a digital photo album where photos were just as they were back in the good old days. And then he goes into it further, writing, Facebook places considerable importance on the photo album and the collection of images. Everything shared, whether tagged or not, is also stored. One of the reasons Facebook's long-term future is likely to be older people is that it is very effective in this role, certainly compared to conventional photograph album and the analog photo. So, Facebook is a social media platform where people can share pages and pages of their photos with their friends and family. These photos don't go anywhere, though, as they are stored away in the photo album of faces, hence the name Facebook. Moving on to some other points that impacted my understanding of this topic are surrounded around the next social media platform on the list, Instagram. Photography on Instagram has much more transient feel than Facebook, Miller says, not to mention those strange new square boxy sort of picture frames that Instagram is all about. Traditional photographs present pictures in rectangle shapes. When we watch TV in modern times, we usually watch it on a rectangular screen, one of the reasons is because the human eye likes to look horizontally more than it likes to look vertically. There is more to cover in a horizontally dominant photograph than a vertical one. So, why did Instagram decide to shave off their pictures? Hmm, maybe it's off of technicality. All squares are rectangles, aren't they? Well, Miller explains, This gives purpose to the day and becomes a bulwark against the constant concern with being bored. As such, where once we framed the photograph, now we use photography to frame experience. Huh, well, that explains a lot. The photo is changing more and more with every new social media. Finally, we now have to talk about Snapchat, the most popular social media platform for pictures. In Miller's article, he states some pretty impressive numbers. Around 350 million photos are shared per day on Facebook. 55 million on Instagram, 400 million on WhatsApp, and 450 million on Snapchat. Wow, all hail Snapchat, the king of photos and videos. It makes you wonder, how could this be? What are they doing differently? Well, one thing off the back is that Snapchat has such an amazing variety of ways you can take a photograph. With the introduction of crazy filters that can make you look like a dog, a superhero, a cat, an orange. They even have a filter that can make you look like a boy or a girl. I have had some fun with this filter myself. But Snapchat is notorious for its 10 second photos and videos. Miller says, if photos can only last for a maximum of 10 seconds, then we can't even pretend it's about memory or even the image. Well, I agree with you, Miller. How can we fully appreciate a photograph if we only have 10 seconds to analyze it? Well, remember when I said earlier that to me, Snapchat is just a social media platform designed to communicate quickly with friends and people you know? Well, I wasn't kidding. 
Because of this, people had to change what constitutes a good photograph, proving that now, more than ever, simple is better and less is more. Of course, shooting vertically is upsetting to some people, myself included. The traditional photograph is probably turning over in its grave right now. But there may be some beauty in vertical photography. Clearly it's popular. I mean, 450 million photos is nothing to scoff at. But I think that it stops at photos. There is no way there will be a movie filmed vertically. That would be such a mess. Although... It may be interesting to watch. So that is my take on photography in the age of Snapchat. And I have a couple questions for my viewers to answer. One is, do you think that there will be another development in photography in the future that will cause a profound impact on how we take photos? And two, how do social media platforms like these impact museums and art galleries? Thank you all for watching. Take care.